Hi students, in this video we're covering rational equations and inequalities. Our objectives are obviously to learn to solve rational equations and to learn to solve rational inequalities. So the steps that we have for solving rational equations are below. First, we want to find any excluded values. That's going to be asymptotes or holes. We want to multiply the entire equation to clear our denominators. And we want to solve the resulting equation. Anything that we get that's uh, an asymptote or a whole can't be a solution. All right, so for example, one, we have x divided by 5x plus 4 equals 3. So the one denominator that we have is 5x plus 4. So we have 5x plus 4 equals 0. So we're going to get 5x equals negative 4. And so x equals negative 4 divided by 5. So as long as we don't get a solution that is negative 4 divided by 5, then our solution works. So the next thing that we want to do is multiply the entire equation by the denominator, which is 5x plus 4. So we're going to multiply by 5x plus 4 here. And that's going to equal 3 times 5x plus 4 on the right side as well. On the left, what happens is the denominators cancel, so we get x equals 15x plus 12, and then we subtract 15x, so we get negative 14x equals 12. You divide both sides by 12. X is 12 divided by negative 14, which simplifies to be negative 6 divided by 7. I'll leave it to you to go and check that solution, but we get x is negative 6 divided by 7. So that value isn't negative 4 over 5, so we know that it works. For example, 2, we have, you can see the equation. So the first thing that we want to do is factor the all of the denominators. So we're going to get this is equivalent to 1 over x plus 3 plus 1 over x minus 3 equals x squared minus 3 divided by x plus 3 times x minus 3. And so we can see that if we get x equals negative 3 or x equals positive 3, neither of those solutions will work. So now our next step is to multiply, again, the entire equation by our different denominators. So we're going to multiply the entire equation by x plus 3 times x minus 3. So we're going to have x plus 3 times x minus 3. And that's going to be multiplied by 1 over x plus 3 plus... 1 over x minus 3, and that's going to equal x squared minus 3 divided by x plus 3 times x minus 3. So when we distribute this product on the outside to each term inside the square brackets, the x plus 3 times x minus 3 is going to cancel the x plus 3 cancels for the first fraction so we get x minus 3 times 1 plus and now for the second fraction the denominator of x minus 3 cancels so we get x plus 3 times 1 equals and then for the last fraction uh, the x plus 3 times x minus 3, both of those cancel, so we get x squared minus 3. And so if we combine like terms, on the left, we're going to get x minus 3 plus x plus 3, which is just 2x equals x squared minus 3. And it's a quadratic function, so we can subtract 2x, so we get 0 equals 
x squared minus 2x minus 3. And we're going to factor that to be x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals 0. And so our two solutions are um, x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. Now, remember, x equals 3 can't be a solution because it's one of our asymptote values. So x equals 3 is not a solution. Our only solution is x equals negative 1. For example, 3, we have 2x plus 17 divided by x plus 1 equals x plus 5. So we know that if we set the denominator equal to 0, we get x equals negative 1. So that's the only thing that can't happen. So now we're going to multiply our entire equation by the denominator x plus 1. So we get x plus 1 times 2x plus 17 divided by x plus 1 equals x plus 5. So when we distribute to the first fraction, the x plus 1 in the numerator cancels the x plus 1 in the denominator. So we get 2x plus 17, and that's going to equal x plus 5 times x plus 1, because we also distribute x plus 1 here. So on the right side, we're going to have to expand by doing distribution. So we get x squared plus x plus 5x, so x squared plus 6x plus 5. And again, because it's a quadratic function, we're going to get 0 on one side. So we get 0 equals x squared plus 4x uh, minus 12 equals 0. And so when we factor, we're going to get x plus 6 times x minus 2. And if we set each factor to 0, we get x equals negative 6 and we get x equals positive 2. And because neither of those values are restricted, those are our two solutions. So x equals negative 6 and x equals 2. So again, for a rational equation, we identify our uh, asymptote values, then we multiply by the denominators to clear the denominators. We solve the resulting equation. If our solutions are not asymptote values, they're just our solutions. So next we have a rational inequality. These are slightly different from a rational equation. The first thing that we want to do is get zero on one side of the inequality. And then we want to find the zeros and excluded values of the rational function. Uh, and we want to put those values in order on a sign chart. If we test the value on each one of those intervals and the solution is the intervals that have the correct sign either plus for greater than or greater than or equal to or minus for less than or less than or equal to. So the first example we have is 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 divided by x squared minus 9. So let's see. Uh, we want to factor the numerator. So a quick review of factoring. So 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 is equal to um, 3x squared. All right, we're going to set it equal to zero, really. So 3x squared. Uh, you're looking for factors of negative 6x squared that give you 5x. So that's going to be minus 6x plus x minus 2. And you can factor out a 3x. So you get 3x times x minus 2 plus 1 times x minus 2. And so, of course, now we're going to get in the numerator 3x plus 1 divided by, I'm, I'm sorry, times x minus 2 divided by x squared minus 9 is a difference of perfect squares. So x plus 3 times x minus 3, and that's less than or equal to 0. So now we factored this. And so now our zeros are the values that make the numerator equal to 0. And so we get our zeros are... Um, x equals negative one third and x equals two. Our asymptotes are x equals negative three and x equals positive three. 
we put all of those values on a number line. So we're going to make a number line. And let's see, the smallest one is negative three. The next one is negative one third. The next one is two. And the next value is three. We might need some more room. So let's see, we'll take that out. Uh, get a little bit more room and put a three on there. All right. So now on each, uh, on each interval, we need to select a test value. And we only care about the sign of the product and division that we get. So say we use uh, x equals negative 4. So then we're just going to, uh, we're going to make four places for parentheses um, and do our operations just by sign. So, uh, so we're going to say one, two, and three, and four. So in the first set of parentheses, if you substitute in negative four, you will get a negative value. In the second set of parentheses, if you substitute in negative four, you're also going to get a negative value. In the denominator, you're going to get a negative and you're going to get a negative. So four negatives multiplied and divided is going to result in a positive value. We don't care what the number is. We just care that it's positive. And so then between negative three and negative one third, say we choose X equals negative one. Then in the first set of parentheses, we'll still get a negative value. In the second set of parentheses, we still get a negative value. In the x plus 3, negative 1 plus 3 is going to be a positive, and negative 1 minus 3 is going to be a negative. So now three negatives and a positive multiplied and divided result in a negative. Between negative 1 third and 2, if we choose x equals 0, for instance, uh, in the first set of parentheses, we get 0 plus 1, which is positive. In the second set, we get 0 minus 2, which is negative. 0 plus 3 is positive. 0 minus 3 is negative. So two negatives are going to give us a positive. If we choose um, x equals 2.5 between 2 and 3, then the first set of parentheses, we get a positive. 2.5 minus 2 is positive. 2.5 plus 3 is positive, and 2.5 minus 3 is negative. So three negatives and a positive, I mean three positives and a negative leave us with a negative. And last, from 3 to infinity, if we substitute in some value like 4, all of our sets of parentheses are positive, which means that the quotient itself is going to be positive. So our sign chart, we want to... Uh, have we, we want to write an interval notation uh, since it's less than or equal to zero we want the negative intervals so that's going to be from negative three to negative one third the one third gets a bracket because it's a zero the negative three gets a parenthesis because it's an asymptote so negative three to negative one third union uh, two, two, three. And so the two, I'm sorry, that should get a bracket. So from two and the three gets a parenthesis because it's an asymptote. All right. So that's how we solve a rational inequality. We have a couple more examples to uh, drive home the point. So for example five, we have two X plus 17 divided by X plus one. And that's greater than X plus five. So the first thing we want to do is isolate the, we want to get zero on one side. So we're going to rewrite this as 2x plus 17 divided by x plus 1. It minus, we're going to say minus x plus 5 in parentheses. Uh, we'll put that over one for right now. Is greater than zero. So, you know, when we add fractions, we have to have a common denominator, which means that we need to multiply this fun the x plus 5 by x plus 1 in the numerator and x plus 1 in the denominator. And so now our rewrite is 2x plus 17 minus 
Uh, in parentheses, we would get x squared plus 6x plus 5. All of that is divided by uh, x plus 1 because they have the same denominator. And that's going to be greater than 0. So if we simplify, we get in the numerator, we get negative x squared uh, minus 6x plus 2x. So minus 4x and negative 5 plus 17 is positive 12 and divided by x plus 1 is greater than 0. So if you don't like working with negatives uh, on the, when you factor, you can just multiply the top by negative one. So that's going to give you x squared minus, uh, I'm sorry, plus 4x minus 12, still divided by x plus one. And that's going to be now less than zero because we multiply by a negative, our sign flips around. So if we rewrite, if we factor this, we get x plus 6 times x minus 2 divided by x plus 1 is less than 0. So again, our zeros are uh, x equals negative 6 and x equals 2. Our asymptotes or x equals negative 1. So on a number line, we're going to put all of those values in order. So from negative infinity to the first value is negative 6. Then we have from negative 6 to negative 1. And then we have from negative 1 to 2. And we have 2 to infinity. So the same thing is we have three sets of parentheses. So now we're going to have one set of parentheses, a second set. And in the denominator, we have a single set. Uh, we want to choose a number on each interval. So let's say we choose uh, from negative infinity to negative six. Let's choose x equals negative seven. So negative seven plus six is negative. Negative seven minus two is negative. Negative seven plus one is negative three negatives uh, multiply and divide to be a negative. Between negative six and negative one, say we select x equals negative two, then uh, negative two plus six is positive. Negative two minus two is negative. Negative two plus one is negative. Uh, a negative divided by a negative is going to result in a positive value. From negative one to two, we can choose x equals zero. And so 0 plus 6 is positive, 0 minus 2 is negative, 0 plus 1 is positive, so we end up with a negative. And if we choose x equals 3, all of these are going to be positive, so we get a positive. Now, based on our work, we want where this is less than 0. So again, we're going to choose the intervals where we have a negative so we're going to have negative infinity to negative six parentheses because we do not have an equal bar for the inequality. So negative infinity to negative six union negative one to two. And the last example is if we have negative X cubed plus four X divided by X squared minus nine. Uh, same principle. First, we want to isolate we want to get zero on one side, so we're going to get negative x cubed plus 4x divided by x squared minus 9 it minus 4x is greater than or equal to zero. So our next step is going to be to multiply by x squared minus, multiply this 4x by x squared minus 9 in the numerator and denominator. So we get negative x cubed plus 4x minus 4x squared uh, plus 36x. Yep. So plus 36x. I'm sorry, that should be negative 4x cubed. My apologies. So negative 4x cubed. 
uh, not 4x squared, negative 4x cubed, and then divided by all of that divided by, uh, so x squared minus 9 is going to factor to be x plus 3 and x minus 3, and that needs to be greater than or equal to 0. So when we combine like terms, that's going to give us um, negative 5x cubed plus 40x. And we're going to divide by, uh, so we get 4x squared, negative so negative 4x cubed plus 36x. Yeah. So then divided by uh, x plus 3 and x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. And in the numerator, we can factor out um, an x, a negative 5, actually, negative 5x. So we get negative 5x times x squared minus 8 divided by x plus 3 and x minus 3. Uh, so in the numerator, our, so our zeros are, what? where do we have space? Our zeros are, so if negative 5x equals 0, we get x equals 0. But then we have the zeros that result from x squared minus 8 equals 0. And so that's going to be x squared equals 8. And so x is going to equal plus and minus the square root of 8. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. Let me throw it into a calculator. So the square root of 8 is really close to 3. I know that. Uh, it's 2.83. So x is equal to plus and minus 2. 0.83 and in the denominator our so we get a uh, 2.83 and negative 2.83 and our asymptotes are uh, 3 and negative 3 so on our number line we're going to do the same thing uh, we're going to put we got negative infinity we have positive infinity and then we have negative 3 negative 2.83, 0, 2.83, and uh, 3. So if we choose some value less than negative 3, we could choose like x equals uh, negative 4, for instance. And in our factored thing, we're going to have one set of parentheses, another set with the x squared minus 8, another for x plus 3, and another for x minus 3. So if we substitute in negative 4, we're going to get a positive value. Um, so x squared minus 8, uh, if we substitute in some value uh, less than negative 3, we're going to get a positive. This value is going to be negative, and that value is going to be negative. So we're going to result in a positive. So to save some work in uh, doing this, anytime we have a sign chart, the intervals alternate in sign as long as the roots have odd multiplicity. And so all of our roots have odd multiplicity. That's uh, to the first power. The 2.83 and negative 2.83 have odd multiplicity. So this is just going to be plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. And so we want where this is greater than or equal to zero. So that's going to be negative. Why did I write the infinity like that? I did an eight. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, that's going to be negative infinity to negative three. Parentheses on both because negative three is an asymptote. Union negative 2.83. That should be a bracket to zero with the bracket and union uh, 2.8323 to 3 with a uh, parenthesis. All right, so that concludes solving rational inequalities and rational equations. It's really just a lot of factoring and setting stuff equal to zero.